Hello, welcome back to the Hellion 6 tutorial series and we're at the stage of the series that I enjoy the most where we deconstruct presets and turn it into a living, breathing synthesizer. This is where we get to figure out how all of these um, random concepts coalesce to make a, a musical instrument that sounds awesome. So I picked this uh, preset to start with, Ice Deposit. And here we are. So the first thing that I always do when loading any new sound up to, to analyze is open the tree. Let's have a look what's what's going on. And something to bear in mind that we've not explicitly discussed yet is the automatic inclusion of these two MIDI modules at the top, the trigger and the flex phraser. You'll usually find that they're not doing anything. And indeed, that's the case here. I believe it's something to do with Halion Sonic compatibility that they have to be there in order for you to be able to load this program in any instance of Halion. Not something I've ever concerned myself, must confess, I only use Halion 6, so we'll just move on, but suffice to say, these uh, modules up here aren't actually doing anything, nor is that. But this is, so we have an LFO here. So this is a MIDI LFO. Remember, you can create as many LFOs as you want, and this one is actually doing something and looks like it's configured. Now, I don't think there's any way to actually identify all of the various components of a program that consume another component. So, and if there is, please tell me, because I'd love to know what it is. But I don't think from examining the LFO, you can actually see what's attached to it. You just have to kind of make a note that it's there and carry on your journey. And eventually we'll get to the stage where something is using it. It's, it's gonna be this down here, spoiler alert. LFO4 is also configured. We'll find out if it's used anywhere. And here we have our granular zone that comprises this sound. And here it is. Let's drag the program into a slot and hear it. Okay, so plenty going on there, let's find out how. It's clearly a granular zone, but let's work left to right, see what's what. And anything that like jumps out at us as interesting or engaged, then we can drill into. It doesn't look like there's any voice control uh, items of interest, and that's all pretty standard stuff as well. Then we've got the grain zone itself. Now there's a really interesting effect uh, that this sound uh, uh, accomplishes to do with its random position. Check out what's going on here. We've got a zero direction, so it's not it's not moving forward. The grains are not moving forwards, they're static. And we're starting at halfway through the sample, 50%, and we have a 50% randomization. What does that mean? Well, it means that there should be a 50% randomization around the center point. So we should be getting playback here. But actually, when I press a key, that's not what happens, watch. Did you see? We saw grains here, and now we don't. Now we've got grains over here and grains over here. I'll do it again, I'll just let that die down. Only when I first press the key down do we ever see any grains behind this line. That's because of the interaction with loop mode. If I turn loop off, Watch what happens now. Now it's genuinely randomizing around the start position. And now it's randomizing around the sustain point. So it's going backwards and forwards from the sustain point in a loop. That's a cool effect that you can definitely find with waves with perhaps more kind of dynamic interest than this one. The concept nevertheless is great. We have a filter which is set to uh, rate reduction key follow, low pass 12, but the cutoff frequency is all the way up. So as things stand at the moment, 
we're not really achieving very much with this filter but it is nevertheless in action it, it's enabled <laughs> So because this is a rate reduction key follow mode, you're gonna get a different effect at different, I'm just pressing C3 all the time here, but. Nice. <laughs> Sorry if that shocked you. Didn't expect it to do that, lovely. We have no attack phase whatsoever. The LFO looks like it's in default mode. So what have we got? Let's have a quick uh, scan down. Got um, LFO three, bus one, LFO four, tons of mod wheel stuff, continuous controllers the sphere okay let's have a quick chat about these um, note expression values there are five of them and they basically allow us to map into this macro so Halion has these like pluggable modules that it says I'm going to give you some basic functionality out of the gate here Auron is one of its kind of standard synth engines that come out of the out, out of the box so when loading a new program, you know, you've got access to all of these different modules and there's Auron. So these are all different types of synthesizers or real world. One of them is like Raven is a piano, fully featured and like acoustic piano kind of thing. And the way that we have uh, of mapping controls inside this module to the outside world is uh, via this concept of note expression. So if we go back to the edit tab and over onto sound, You'll see down here, these values tell you which controls in Auron are mapped into the into the gubbins of Halion itself. So um, note expression one is reserved for Auron's cutoff value. Then when we jump over to our zone and we go down into the note expression table, we see those are the five. Um, values that we saw up above so we choose cut off as our source and now we can plug that into our zones um, internal cutoff so here in the filter section see the cutoffs at 50% if I move that to 3 o'clock jump over to the macro there's the Auron filter cutoff at 3 o'clock Move it to nine o'clock. Now the cutoff's at nine o'clock. So that's how we tie those controls together. So as a performance instrument, you know, you can have that visible and that gives you access to your, that's what, these macros are all about giving you easy access to common functionality. I personally don't much care for them. I think it hides a lot of the functionality that I wanna see the real nuts and bolts under the hood hood but i also acknowledge that you know there is a there is a value in seeing all of these knobs and sliders and it gives you something pretty to look at when you're using the synth but the bottom line is these things tie into the equivalent values in the zone that we have that we have like manually configured under the hood if i just create a new program up here when i go over to the sound tab there are my five values. So that's an Auron thing that you're seeing there. You're just getting that for free in every um, Auron plugin that you use. So let's get rid of this. Now these settings down here um, at first don't seem to do anything. They're pretty unfathomable. So what the hell's going on? We've got the bus itself acting as a modulation source into pitch uh, with a one octave level which doesn't seem to do anything. If I press a key uh, and do whatever I want to this value, doesn't have any effect at all. That's not what's going on here. The input from this 
um, modifier is being taken from this output here, which in turn is mapped to the LFO4 with a modulation wheel modifier. So LFO4 is the primary driver, the modulation source, but it's being it has a, a mask applied to it, a layer applied to it by the modulation wheel. Now as things stand at the moment, all of this is at zero. So when I press a key, none of this is wired together. If I introduce an amount to this effect, my modulation wheel is currently turned up. So that's the modulation wheel applying to LFO4, which is oscillating at one hertz. See? It in turn is outputting its modulation value to bus one, which then when we apply this effect, is feeding in here which ultimately raises the pitch now that is one hell of a convoluted way to do a thing there must be a reason why they decided to make it so complicated maybe they were just showing off but it's pretty impressive and again that every time you're exposed to something like this I'm not particularly interested in the effect you know modulating pitch is easier than that but the idea that you can do these things is really what sparks my interest think right okay I'll, I'll squirrel that away somewhere one day I'm going to use that feature and the modulation wheel is also tied into grain position form and grain duration and tone cutoff so we're getting a lot of bang for our buck out of the modulation wheel if I take that down and we introduce this one instead That's the form of being introduced. Pulling the cutoff right down. Choosing different positions in the grain in the sample from which to select our grains. So that's cut off and resonance. modulation matrix I did say modulation matrix is a mighty place you know that is it's like the crossroads it's the Constantinople of Hallian everything comes together and you know you get an awful lot of interesting combinations between all of these different sounds now we've got some um, effects on the bus here so when I clicked on these see nothing changed in the left hand screen when you're looking at stuff like this the MIDI um, modules and effects click your sound tab now we can see the step flanger hear it? awesome doing its thing Thank you. 
seeing it. <laughs> I've killed the sound. I've killed the sound. Sorry, sorry, sound. But you just it, it you just get lost in this otherworldly place of oh my god, how many things are there I can do to a single sound? So I've just you you saw me wreak havoc on all of those settings then, and I've not put them all back the way they were. Do I care? Hell no. So a seemingly innocent little preset with one granular synthesizer and a couple of effects slapped on. Suddenly, you know, the, the world opens out to us. As we drive it, uh, dive into more of these presets, I'll try to kind of tip a nod to the various macro pages. Like I say, I try to pretend that they're not there, that you kind of can't, because they do actually impose um, a, a, an additional mask over the top of these preset sounds. If you're building a sound from scratch, you don't have to use a macro. You don't get any brand new functionality out of the box with them. You get pre-wired stuff that's designed to make your life easier in many respects by giving you easy access to the more common functionality. And that's great and I'm all for it as far as presets are concerned. But when I come to do my own sound design, I don't actually use them. And that's why they haven't featured in any part of the how do we make sounds with Hallion because I don't use macros. But when we're looking at these presets, I'll try to keep coming back to them to say, right, this is what Auron is doing. This is what Anima is doing. And there are different horses for courses. You'll see different modules plugged in depending on what type of sound is being uh, created by the preset. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please consider subscribing. If you hit notifications, you'll find out when the next episode. I plan to do a few of these for Hallian. It's a deep, deep monster. I'm going to have to have a few um, deep dives in order to really get a flavour of, of the kinds of things that, that are available to us. So I hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.